Welcome to our Mom of Eight Momversations. We are so excited to have each one of you participating today. Um, my name is Reagan Barnes, and I am a mom of eight, and I am the founder of Mom of Eight. Mom of Eight is a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering you to elevate your motherhood experience. Um, today, we are going to go over a few of our main pillars of our organization. We um, like to play with words here. So of course, you've already noticed that the word motivate is a play on the word motivate. And we actually continued uh, with that vate part of our word. And we have four vate words. Uh, we like to say that um, our mission is to activate moms. We want to cultivate maternal instincts, innovate for modern day motherhood, and elevate the respect given to the role of mothers. Now, um, I have some friends joining me today. Leah is a co-founder of Mom of Eight, and she is also a mom of eight. We also made a last minute invitation to Lindley Baker to join us. Lindley uh, is a mom of six, and she has written a book called um, Do What You Really Want to Do. Don't be afraid to do what you really want to do. And this is very applicable to our current month of January when everybody's talking about goals and resolutions because Lindley has had lots of goals over the years and has really established um, an important method and mindset overall of how to be very deliberate with your goals as well as move forward and make those goals happen despite the obstacles and we all face obstacles and things outside of our control. So um, I would like to start with Lindley having a few minutes to share her story with you. So um, let's give Lindley that time and listen carefully. She's got good stuff. Hi, it's nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Reagan. I'm really excited to talk to moms because a lot of times society and, and our families tell us things that limit us. And my whole book is uh, reach, the subtitle is reach all your life dreams. So I assume most of you have the dream of being a mom and you're living that. And sometimes it doesn't feel very dreamlike. It can be very challenging, but yeah. you, you probably have other dreams too. And, and where are they? And it's really a problem when mothers get so involved in their children that they they lose their own identity so if you you might be at this stage of your life where you don't have a lot of time for your individual things but you need to you what i say is you need to think about it to plan for it see where you can fit it in so for me i had three main life goals one was to, was motherhood one was music because i love music and performing music and the other one was math and math was my first choice for a career because I knew you could make money more easily with math than with music and so I studied that as an undergraduate started that in my career and then I got married and I had a kid and then I had another kid and then I decided that I wanted to prioritize raising my own children so I uh, I resigned my job, and that was one of the hardest things I ever did. I um, I stuttered. It was the only time in my adult life I stuttered because I loved my work so much, and then I had to give it up, or I chose to give it up for something better. And I spent the next 19 years mostly raising my children. I had four more, one adopted daughter from China, who's, who's great. 
And so I didn't have, uh, I, I didn't participate full time in my career all for those whole 19 years. And you would think, well, if you're a professional, like a doctor or a lawyer or something, you can't leave your career for 19 years and then go back. But I loved it so much. I, I wanted to go back I, or I hoped I might be able to. So I looked for opportunities to keep current somewhat over those years. I ended up teaching an actuarial course in China, the first one in the country, when I happened to be living there with my family and China needed someone to teach this kind of math. And then I also taught sometimes back in the States, part-time at universities. And I also volunteered with the profession. So that was a way to keep up somewhat as well. Well, when my baby went to first grade, I decided to get a degree in music because as I said, I love music and I wanted to, um, I wanted it to be on my obituary. That was really the, the crux of it. Because <laughs> I figured- I love that. I if, love that. <laughs> if I get a degree in something, whoever's writing my obituary will remember to include it and therefore music will be on my obituary. But I mean, that's not the whole thing. I, the, the idea of, my idea of an obituary is like who you become. So are you, you know, do you just live life every day and, and bounce with the punches and um, then your life ends up what it ends up being? Or do you have some kind of direction where you want? Like I had these goals of math and music and motherhood. And I hope that by the time I got through all my life, I would have had a chance to do big things in, in those areas. So I was able to do that and I was really thankful. And so then after when my baby was in the middle of high school, I decided that it was time to try to be, to go back to corporate America and work as an actuary again, which is a specialized math that I do. And that was hard. Everyone wanted recent experience. And maybe some of you have experienced this or are worried about it. And it took me many months, even with a really great resume to get an interview. But once I finally got an interview and the interviewer was interested in really getting to know me, what made me click, he, he could tell that I had invested a lot of time in volunteering, working for a low, a low rate of money to try to keep current. And that showed him that I was dedicated to my profession and I wasn't just kind of bored when my kids grew up and um, thought maybe I'll get back in. He could see the long-term commitment and therefore he, um, he decided he would hire me. It was kind of a four month trial program. We'll see if we like each other. And, um, but he did. And, and I found that in reaching my dreams, things went even better than I would have expected. Like when I got my degree, when my children were little, I found I was a better mother because I was, I was spending the day with grownups studying and creating great music. And then when I came home, I was fresh and energized and ready to deal with the challenges of the six kids. And then when I, once I got onto the job, they, they were shocked at how I could organize things sound like a mother thing <laughs> it does yes <laughs> yeah I could organize things I could manage people I could keep track of things and um they and those are skills that you don't gain sitting at a desk every day year after year and so after only seven months four of which were that trial to see if we'll even keep you they promoted me to a manager and so it wasn't the skills that I gained in the in those seven months that prepared me for the promotion it was what i did in those 19 years organizing my family nurturing them helping them gaining those soft skills and those i couldn't get hired into that manager job though because there wasn't any way to put that on my resume at the time and even right. if i mentioned how many kids i had like people would hang up or <laughs> conversation yeah. would go dead so it's it was a a challenge to 
to do that. So part of why I've written this book is to help women or anyone who's left the workforce for a long time figure out how to get back. And also there's a message to employers of there are tons of really important soft skills that are going to help your organization if you hire this person. You know, they have pent up enthusiasm. They're so excited to be back to work and all these soft skills that they've gained in reaching their dreams of motherhood and other things that, you know, once they're, if somebody's had a purposeful break, then, then they could be a really great employee. And so I, I see the tide starting to turn. Not all companies are open-minded, but there are some that are, and that will, that even have programs that are, are going to help you um, come back. Like MetLife has a program called ACT2. It's like, okay, here's the second act of your life. Uh, maybe you want to come in and be a corporate employee again. So that's um, wonderful. Yeah. So, so that's kind of what's going on. I, I really appreciate you um, uh, sharing that experience with us and um, hearing, especially the timeline in your life that um, I think is very hopeful, uh, particularly maybe to young mothers who hear 19 years and you were still able to re-enter the workforce. So it wasn't even a matter of a, of a two-year break or five years, you know, but it was like you really did um, dedicate a considerable amount of time outside of the workforce while keeping it in the back of your head that you would want to return and, and establishing certain patterns and methods within your life um, to keep those skills fresh and um, I'm so grateful that you were willing to come with us today uh, because that is indicative of what we want to do here with Momovate. We want both the mother as well as the employer to have that overall mindset that motherhood is a good match for employers at the timing when the timing is right with the mom. And, and sometimes moms don't have a, a lot of control over that timing. Sometimes it becomes a financial necessity. Um, and sometimes they, they really have taken the, the years off and need to um, be able to explain to the employers. And at Mama they, we even want to go out and actively advocate among employers to say, this is what deliberate intentional motherhood brings out into women or, or the gifts that it gives them through the work that they are doing as mothers. Now, um, I kind of prepared a little bit ahead of time um, to uh, here at the, I, I use the library as my place to um, pr produce this show because it has much more um, reliable internet. <laughs> So before I came, I put some things back here behind me, and I'm going to display them now. Dun, da, da, da. Okay, I just got to check in my camera if you guys can see those. Um, these are uh, the word raise, because what do moms do? We raise our children, and at Mom of Eight, we actually we consider it that moms are raising all of society by the work they do as mothers. And, uh, and we want the employers to come to understand this, particularly in the fact that it is a um, acronym. So each of these letters actually explodes into greater meaning um, that indicates to the employers what soft skills the mothers have been developing and will bring to the workforce themselves as mom employees. But another long-term perspective that we want to plant into the ideas of these employers is that these mothers have been incubating future employees. And as the mothers have modeled these skills, which I will detail for you, as the mothers have modeled these skills to their children, then their children grow up to become the next generation of employees. And they bring these skills with them. So let's make, not make you wait any further. I will try to delineate for you what these are. Um, so let me 
get this figured out, I want to use the whiteboard. Um, on the Zoom. It doesn't look like it's going to let me do that, so we will not make you wait any longer. The R is for relationships. So, um, now, moms are in charge of a lot of relationships, and I don't want to necessarily say in charge, because relationships are, by nature, um, at least a two-way street. Um, and yet moms have this position being with their kids uh, where they can really have the strongest influence on a lot of those relationships on how we treat each other. Um, R could be for repetition because moms are always repeating to our kids um, the appropriate ways to treat each other and interact. Um, the A is for atlas. Um, now, uh, if you were an employer and watching this presentation, then you would be trying to translate in your head, how are these soft skills that a woman can bring to my place of employment and what value will they add? And I think the relationships one is pretty obvious because there's customer relations, there's relationships between employees um, and a, a person, a woman, who is good at navigating those relationships, good at resolving conflict. Um, that's, that's a pretty obvious one. But with atmosphere, I think an employer would have to recognize that there are various aspects of the workforce. And part of it is what kind of ambiance is there, right? What's the workplace culture, so to speak? And that is where the atmosphere comes in. It's more than just the relationships, but it is. Um, it's involving, you know, what was there a lot of things to visually stimulate or um, audibly, or, you know, is there too much complaining, for instance, um, as far as what kinds of things you hear, um, the what kinds of things you smell, or <laughs> I do have a friend whose husband works at the city dump, and that's just something their family always has fun talking about is the smells that are involved <laughs> at his work. Then, um, you know, and I don't know that a mom could do a lot about a city dump smell, but she would try. That's the thing. Oh. Um, okay, the I, there's a smaller one, is for income and outflow. So, in general, that's basic financial skills and being able to apply financially, um, good monetary decision-making. Um, and again, that's going to be a soft skill that employers will appreciate and uh, that, a, that a woman can value what the, how to stretch the dollar and how to make good decisions um, financially in whatever role she might have in that company. Although it's important for employers to all, also realize that the decisions they're making, their employees are making outside of the business are going to affect the business sometimes. Somebody who has good ability to handle their personal finances is not going to be as stressed out. They're not going to necessarily, you know, have the, the problems that come with uh, too much debt, for instance. Um, and, and I think that's a really important thing for employers to come to accept is that work and personal life, just because there's one person going between the two, um, they are always going to overlap to some extent. There will always be uh, that need to be sensitive to what's going on outside the office or whatever the workplace environment might be. Um, and, and respect that and come to accept that fact. Um, so the S is for schedules and systems. Um, in terms of mothering life, this is a lot. This is a lot. We, we 
take care of the chores systems. We nowadays we really have to have good pulls on screens and helping our children develop good screen habits. Uh, we're in charge of traditions that uh, we want our family to continue doing. Um, things like homework uh, and, and just really helping our children develop good rituals and habits um, and uh, character traits like being on time or um, what have you. It fits in to the schedules and systems. And I think any employer would hear those lists of things and be like, yeah, that is going to be helpful in my workplace to have somebody who is good at that sort of management. And then the E finally. Is for energy and what we have in mind with regards to energy is eating, exercise, and sleep. Now, those are all physically oriented things, right? When we're talking about what we eat, uh, how much we exercise or move our bodies, um, and whether or not we get quantity sleep or quality sleep, or hopefully a mix of the two. Um, that, those all sound physical, and yet they've also been um, inseparably connected with our mental health and well being. And that is critical and crucial. Our employers right now are really noticing that um, there is a lot of mental health instability going on. And of course, at this moment, for the last two years or so, a lot of that has been pandemic related. Um, but these were concerns that employers were having even before the pandemic uh, in a lot of these areas that um, their employees were suffering and needing help in these areas. So imagine bringing on a, a woman who has consistently been thinking about those things, applying those principles um, and encouraging her family to setting good examples for them to follow and, uh, and setting up systems that um, encourage them to have good bedtimes and that sort of thing. So, so these are all interrelated here at Mom of Eight. We see things a lot as a set of gears um, and that, you know, it's really important to, for, to realize how much all of these things interact with one another and, and cause movement across the spectrum. Now, here's a little exciting announcement in these last few minutes is we have a fitness journal that we would like to um, give away today. Um, and it is given as a gift from Mom of Eight um, for people. I love it because it talks about body, mind, and soul. So even though um, it is specific to working out, it's got ways to keep track of your cardio and strength and um, tone meditation is in there. So anyways, it, it recognizes the fact that it is a journey, not just physical, but it's your mind and your soul as well. So we, we will keep track of who is with us today over the next few minutes um, and, and into the time frame that we don't record and give that away to one of our attendees. And that will be fun. Uh, so um, I do want to kind of bring up with, uh, I invited Leah to be part of this conversation too. Let me um, ask Leah, who is it that we need respect from in your opinion? Is it just the employers? A great, a great question. I think number one, that needs to start with ourself. I agree. If we respect ourselves and identify that we have those strengths, but we also come with weaknesses, right? And respect that. And, um, and then respecting those around us, right? Those relationships and um, those we work with, because they're the ones that your references when you go to employers. So 
um, having the respect of your associates and your family members or uh, others you worked with. Yeah, and, and that is, again, not necessarily going to be uh, an employment type of situation, but more um, particularly during the years that we dedicate specifically to motherhood. We don't like to call that stay at home motherhood because that just sounds too confining and too isolating. So we call it full-time motherhood. And we like to take that title. It gives us the opportunity to leave our homes, <laughs> to stay at home. And I honestly don't know very many full-time moms who really do stay at home. There's just too much too many errands to run. I mean, really, for most of us, the those two weeks of pandemic shutdown when it first started was kind of a relief. Like, oh, I'm not spending 12 hours in the car. I have all this free time now. <laughs> um, so we do want to uh, bring that to mind is that, that this is full time motherhood and uh, and it means that we still interact with quite a few people. We maybe we're on the PTA. Maybe we um, have, you know, a, a reading book club type thing that we go to or whatever it is, um, how we make friends. Church, for instance, might be another way. And those people can be, like you mentioned, our references. And hopefully they are aware of all that we are doing. Um, and when we're ready to reenter the workforce. They can give references with regards to these things. And Reagan, what I really love about the full-time mom is even if a mom is required to work, she doesn't leave her full-time mom on the doorstep when she leaves the door. She still worries and thinks about her child while she's at work. She's still a mom, no matter where she's doing, Um, you know. So it's a more inclusive term. I like that. Yeah. Very good. Well, I'm going to share my screen Um, and for these, like I mentioned, this first 30 minutes that we're together is a recorded portion and then we move into an unrecorded portion and we just want to invite all of you um, to join us for that unrecorded part because it's more interactive where we get to ask questions and share our thoughts and um, and we do want everybody to, oh, I'm not, I'm not presenting. Hold on and let me present this the way it's supposed to be presented. All right. So, of course, it's going to have to load for a minute. But what the general point is to write things down. And we pre- provide a digital smile journal for you, smile stands for support, music, inspiration, laughter, and education. And it's our goal to give you all of those things during our time together here in Momversation. I do have a song to sing for you. So be sure to stay after we stop the recording. Um, You can, when you sign up to join our mom unity on our website, and that is free, then we include the link to that digital smile journal. Um, I think I will choose to stop trying to share since that's just not working and uh, move forward um, with our uh, general thank you and goodbye. We're so grateful for Win Win Women. They provide this platform um, and we are grateful for all that they provide and the uh, people behind the scenes who make it all happen. And um, so oh, also when you do get to see our, our slides, you'll notice lots of really high quality photos and that we give thanks to the people at, on Pixabay and Unsplash who upload their photos for free for us to use to make our presentations all the better. So. Um, and at this time, we will go ahead and um, say goodbye to those that are watching there on the archives and invite you next time to, to be sure to join us for the live portion uh, where we can interact with each other more. And we will care and connect and collaborate, which is the mission of Win Win Women. Thanks again.